What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this afternoon. So what we're going to be covering in this update is a brief analysis on what we've been seeing on Ortex throughout the first trading day of this week. We are seeing some little moves in the short interest and utilization that I want you guys to understand. Now, in addition to this, we are going to do a brief option chain analysis to see what is the overall sentiment in AMC just based off of the option chain at the current Current time. Now, in addition to this, we have gotten some unbelievable news for AMC over this past weekend. And guess what? It is just getting started. I would expect to see even more news like this continue to come out over the next couple of weeks. And that is just going to show us even more how stupid it is right now, in my opinion, to enter into a short position against AMC. Now, in addition to this, we also have the potential for payment for order flow to really get a deeper look and get us on that track to getting that practice banned. We know it's not allowed in Canada or in the UK, and I do think that over an extended period of time, we are going to see some of those practices banned in the United States as well, and that is really going to change the way our market works for the better. Now, when we're taking a look at the price action for AMC today, we are not seeing anything that we really want to see right now. It is another red day, but again, what you have to remember is that there's so many different broad market catalysts and events that have been going on. And as I have said before, we are not out of the woods yet. We are still dealing with the ramifications from Evergrande and we have until October 18th to really figure out this debt ceiling situation. We're going to go over some comments from Biden as well that are really spooking the markets. But again, what we know right now, the shorts have not covered. Now, a lot of people are in this play for the sole reason for that big short squeeze that we are all expecting to happen. Now, when you think about this really logically, when you see the price on the screen start to fluctuate around, but you know that the shorts are not only not covering their position, but adding to their short position, which is going to mess with the share price anyway, it just makes this situation even more juicy later on down the road when the next big price run-ups do happen. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And the more people that we have staying up to date on accurate AMC information, the stronger our community becomes. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. So when we come over to this Ortex data right here, we're currently seeing utilization still very high at 85.23%, but not as high as we would like to see it in terms of triggering some of those for share recalls. Now, we know there is that situation kind of unraveling with Bank of America right now and the relationship with Citadel and how that could potentially lead to some forced share recalls if Citadel at the current time does have one of those big short positions against any one of these given stocks. But that is a lot of speculation. And just based off the, of, off of the utilization, we aren't really seeing that forced share recall potential at this given time. But we are still seeing the short interest very high at 20.32%. And when we come over and take a look at what the option chain is telling us in terms of open interest, the sentiment that we are seeing, and this is something I've touched on previously in a couple of videos, the sentiment is overwhelmingly bullish when you take a look at this open interest. Now, there are going to be some different strikes that are going to have a higher concentration of open interest on any given week. But what we are seeing in general is that a lot of maybe institutional investors, mostly retail investors, though, are very, very bullish on AMC going forward. So now let's get into this really, really big news that we saw over this past weekend for AMC. So AMC Entertainment sets new post-reopening records for global attendance, admission revenues, and food and beverage sales for a single weekend on the strength of Venom, Let There Be Carnage in the U.S., and James Bond's No Time to Die internationally. What this tells us is that not only are people slowly starting to go back out into the economy, but we are seeing AMC's business model as a whole continue on this uptrend. So as we've said previously, a couple of years ago, it might have been a good idea to enter into a short position against AMC. They were not doing well as a company. They had a lot of debt and they weren't getting as many people into the theaters. That is not the case anymore. We are continually seeing AMC get better 
fundamentally as a business, which just gives us even more conviction in our decision to hold. And again, when you think about what these big institutional investors do, basically the first step of when evaluating any company that they want to invest in is that they're going to look into the fundamentals. AMC has a lot of potential going forward, and I do think that is going to spark some more institutional investment going forward, which is going to be overly bullish again. Now let's get into this potential payment for order flow band situation and how long this could potentially take to play out. So when we come over here, preview what to watch for in the US SEC's GameStop report. So again, we know they've been investigating and we know that we have this report coming out in the near future. And these are some things that we need to key in on once we see this report. So payment for order flow. Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, has been critical of payment for order flow, the practice of retail brokers like Robinhood Securities or Charles Schwab sending most of their customers orders to wholesale market makers where they internalize those orders fill them themselves rather than to exchanges in return for payments gensler has said payment for order flow raises potential conflicts and has questioned whether brokers are incentivized to encourage their customers to trade more frequently to maximize the payments payment for order flow proponents say it is a major reason most brokerages were able to stop charging trading commissions which helped fuel the retail trading boom but when we come down here here, we can see that, but Gensler has said that because so many traders uh, trades are now executed away from exchanges where stock prices are formed, the best prices shown on exchanges may not accurately reflect market sentiment, causing wider bid ask spreads, which the market makers traverse in order to get their little tiny profit to the detriment of all retail investors. Now, when we think about what has gone on with payment for order flow in this potential ban in the past, the SEC and our government regulatory bodies that are basically in charge of everything have said a payment for order flow ban is not off the table and have given the basically the job to the SEC to investigate this to figure out if there is something wildly wrong in our markets. Now, what we really need to think about is that, yes, payment for order flow is not great, but it all comes down to what the market makers are doing with those orders. We know that there is essentially a duopoly, as it's called, with uh, Citadel and and virtue who are basically handling a lot of these orders and when we don't see a lot of these orders going to the lit exchanges we know that it causes a wider bid ask spread and it's not going to accurately reflect market sentiment so hopefully they are able to do something about this but again this is going to take some time to play out very similar to what we talk about with this squeeze situation going forward now, moving on a bit further, clearing houses and settlement times, we know that since we operate on this T plus two cycle, that was one of the main reasons why we saw that buy button get turned off back in January. This put a lot of pressure on the brokers and clearing houses that they were not able to fulfill their obligations. But if you guys have been following along with my videos over the last couple of weeks, you would know that the DTCC, the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, has already implemented a program that beginning in 2022, they are going to be starting to reduce settlement times. They're going to be going to T plus one, then down to T plus zero when they find it necessary and the actual system can handle it. So that is another really good step in the right direction. So I think a lot of people should be really excited about what this report has to offer. And then the last Last thing that I really want to touch on here, short selling disclosures. It makes zero sense why the rules at the current time do not require these institutions to report their short interest. It really looks like they are trying to hide something the way these rules are set up. And when we take a look at the Ortex data, we know that we're just getting a bare baseline understanding of what the short interest could potentially be at the current time. And we know that since the market makers, according to Reg Show, have the legal ability to naked short in order to provide liquidity to the market, those shorts are not going to be counted into that number as well. So we are never really, at the current time, going to be able to get a good understanding of what the short interest is on any given stock. But... When we take a look at what's going on with AMC as a whole and we compare it to the broad market, which we are going to cover a little bit in tonight's wrap-up video, I am very bullish going forward. But you have to keep in mind that with these volatile times and the different news articles and hit pieces that we are going to see based on this debt ceiling situation in Evergrande and what the government is doing at the current time, we are going to see some volatility and we do need to be okay with that. So that is going to wrap 
wrap up this update on AMC. If you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn a couple about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.